Hi, I am Fadi. I am 27 years old. There are five people in my family. Ami, Daddy, Fadi, Ed, Lela. I want to be a pilot because I love playing. I love you. Fadi was my first child and he was the happiest and the sweetest baby. He gave me no trouble at all. Um, he met all his milestones on time. Um, he learned to speak, to read, to write. It wasn't quite the level of other children, but you know, he had skills, which is why he was diagnosed quite late. Uh, he was eight before he was diagnosed with high functioning autism. Um, but I always knew there was something not quite right. Um, I didn't even know what autism was at that point. It wasn't quite the household name it is now. But there were some red flags like he was obsessed as a child in lining things up, in spinning things, in spinning himself and he would repeat st uh, speech a lot. In fact, he learned to talk by repeating speech and he would mix up his pronouns um, and his interests were very narrow, like he could spend hours, absolute hours drawing planes, but he wasn't really interested in playing with other children. But I think the biggest, the biggest difficulty we faced with Fadi always was with his tolerance with noise. So for Fadi, it's not always the kind of obvious loud noises, right? It's, it's sometimes a little listing. Um, I remember the other day we were sitting in the garden and there was a fly buzzing around. There was a lawn mowing, lawn mower going around two, three houses down from us. And, and that just kept getting to him. And, and, and then slowly, uh, and, and that just builds up in a way where he gets more and more agitated and it results in a meltdown, right? So it's, it was a relatively relaxed, quiet situation as far as we are concerned. But for him, because I think he can't process noises out of his system, he can't zone them out like we can zone out peripheral or background noise. It can just build up and lead to a meltdown. Something very, very, it's, it's very unusual, right? For example, if you're sitting on the, de on the, on the dining table, sometimes somebody's chewing will start getting him uh, agitated, right? He, he, he'll get agitated. And he'll tell you, he's, he's chewing is bothering me, chewing is bothering me, right? So it's, it's, I think, just his inability to zone out noises, background noises, which we are able to do, but he can't, right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's something that is, is, is a physical impediment for him. Um, the obvious, the, then, then you obviously have to have the obvious noises, right? A baby screeching in the background sometimes, and that's often, often normal. He always reacts, even if he's happy, right? He'll react in a happy way, but he will always react. A car honking, that's bad news, right? So especially if it's a sudden car honking in the parking lot where we're walking outside to our car. That, that, uh, that is, it's, it's obvious that it's painful to, painful to them, right? So, so that really bothers him a lot. For as long as I can remember, I've always had to be prepared to remove Falibai from any kind of noisy situation. And it has made me more sensitive to noise. So I'm a teenager and after having been to several parties, I can conclude that a certain level of noise really disturbs me. And I think that's because of my experiences with Fadi. I feel like my sensitivity to noise has really been augmented. And I can say the rest for my entire family. We might be the only family in the world that travels on flights exclusively in the middle of the night. So traveling is easier on Fadi by, or we may be the only family in the world that has to park super close to the entrance of a supermarket or mall so in case there's a situation we can remove him as quickly as possible. We may be the only family in the world that has to eat lunch at 4 p.m. to make sure we can go to a restaurant that is quiet and so the dining experience is easier for Fadi. So I'm the youngest in the family, I'm 12. So one of my earliest memories are 
like of mum telling us to like be quiet because it'll disturb Fadi Bai. Like if we're in the car, we weren't really allowed to speak that loud. Or if we're at home playing a board game or playing around, we weren't allowed to like scream and run around. Like we had to be more aware of how loud we were being when Fadi Bai was around. So now that I'm older, I'm not a little kid anymore. A lot of my friends are naturally louder. They like loud music, they're shouting, dancing. And when I'm at their houses or at school, I naturally join them like I'm an extrovert. So I like to sing and dance and things like that. And I have a loud voice. But when I'm at home, I'm naturally quieter. It's kind of like I've just been conditioned to be like that. So when they come over to my house, like we kind of have to be quieter and I have like a double personality and they don't sometimes they don't really understand where I'm coming from but I'm hoping that this will help them to understand what my life is really like at home. I've spent um, all of Fadi's life managing his noise aversion but even I get caught off guard sometimes. I mean a few years ago um, I had taken him to watch the movie Mulan and he was enjoying it, um, we were all enjoying the movie, until this battle scene came on. I had no idea we were going to be thrown that curveball because the battle scene was long, it was loud, it had dramatic music, there were people fighting, and it ended with a literal avalanche that buried everyone. And in the pin drop silence that followed, Fadi had one of the worst meltdowns of his life that I've witnessed. I mean I looked across at him and his eyes were glazed over, he was shaking and he was just muttering to himself. He felt, it felt like he was not present, he was somewhere else. I think he had retreated into himself uh, to protect against all that sensory overload and we, when we tried to move him out of the cinema, he threw himself on the floor and he started screaming and thrashing about really, uh, really aggressively. It was very disturbing and shocking to see. Um, no one could get close to him. Um, the entire cinema was watching stunned this thing unfolding before him, before them. But all I could see was my child in so much pain that he literally could not control his body he could not control it and he was jerking violently and when i ran to hold him instinctively um he was shaking so much that his head hit my forehead and it hit my forehead so hard that i saw stars I wonder if you can see this. The dent never quite went away and I'm glad. I'm glad because I wear it like a soldier wears his medals. It reminds me every day of all that we've been through and how far we've come. And more importantly, it reminds me of the struggle and the pain that Fadi goes through every single day to live in our noisy world. <sighs> Fadi is the gentlest creature around and even that day at the cinema, as soon as he came out of his meltdown, he was looking for me and the minute he saw me, he was like, Ami, is Ami okay? Are you okay? Is Ami sad with me? Ami, I'm never going to do it again. He wrote me many, many notes saying sorry over and over and over again. So all my life, when I see my mom upset or like nervous because of Fadi, it makes me really sad. And it's like our whole family's like emotion, like happiness or sadness depends on him. Like if he's happy, then we're happier. If he's upset, then we get upset. And it's like, I know it's no one's fault, but sometimes hard to deal with that. So because Fadi's my brother, it's kind of just taught me how to just how I can't always just think about myself, I have to think about him as well. So 
when dealing with other people it's kind i'm kind of more of just a naturally sensitive person like i'm able to understand what other people need and it it's not just always about me it's like i've learned how to understand and be more empathetic as a person because of him so look all said and done uh, badi's badi's the gentlest sweetest child right my most relaxing time is spending time with him because he gives you unconditional love right there is no no strings attached he's really really genuine right and then yeah we have the challenges but that doesn't mean that we don't have good times we we don't have these special moments as a family as a family i think god thank thank god we're very very happy uh and then we're in a good place and uh, these are challenges everybody has challenges i guess this is our challenge and 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 life goes on when i tell my friends about vadi the first thing they tell me is do you want me to tell other people is it okay if i tell others and it's almost like they think that having vadi is some kind of taboo but in my view having vadi has actually simplified my life a lot more than other people realize i understand my priorities i understand what my goal should be in life and that is to be a good person people wonder what their purpose in life is but i don't have to wonder i know I know what my purpose in life is. Fadi. Fadi is the purpose of my life. I can't imagine life without Fad. He is my biggest challenge and my biggest biggest joy. Um I feel so comforted in the fact that I will always have Fadi around me. I will never be an empty nester. he will always be around with his big grin and his big hugs and and that makes me very happy <laughs>